At one point at Channel 8, the general manager, a guy named Jack Wiedemann, comes up to me and he says, we're going to put you on the air. People will listen and watch. I said, why? He said, well, he said, you've got this high-pitched, squeaky voice and funny accent, and people will think this is great. Well, nothing came of it. Then one day they said, we're going to have you do the sports, which wouldn't be real good. I'm not, I'm, I, I like some sports, but I'm not an expert at it. I mean, I know football has a pointy ball, but if you need a lot of detail, I get awful sketchy. Uh, then they said, well, we'll have you do the weather. Well, I mean, I can look out and see if it's raining, but so can anybody else. Then I didn't hear anything for a while. Then uh, one day they said, we're going to have you host a horror movie. And I figured, well, you know, Jack's probably been in the sauce again. This will go away and I'll be, it'll all be forgotten. And one day I was sitting in my office, typing commercial, and two guys show up in the carpenter shop with a coffin lid. They said, stand up. I stood up. One of them stood in back of me and held up the lid. The other one looked and said, yeah, that'll fit. And they walked out. And I figured, well, you know, Jack's either serious or he's awful mad at me, one or the other. And later on, I get a notice telling me to appear for a tape session in the studio. And they had actually, without my knowing it, they had put together a nice little set and everything in the studio. And I show up and they've got this costume. They've got a guy that does makeup and he's putting makeup on me. I said, well, you know, uh, what, what, what are we going to do? I said, Jack, what do I do? And he said, well, open the lid and say hi. And I said, well, Jack, that's going to take about four seconds. What do we do for the rest of the two hours? And Jack says, I've got you on the air. The rest of the problem is up to you. you know? And that's basically how the program started. So for now until next week from the Bowman body here on Shock Theater, hope you've enjoyed the show. Don't forget Charlie Chain. And now we'll be back uh, next week. Until then, good night. Every Saturday night on your TV screen, Bowman body keeps you awake just to mess up your dream. The Bowman body show was when it was on um, Channel 8, when it first came on, he hosted, uh, he was the, he had the makeup and he had the, the whole popped out of the coffin at the beginning of the show, and the Channel 8 bought a package of really bad horror movies. But it didn't matter, because it's almost, the, the worse the movie was, the better the show was. Because it was all, it, you basically put up with the movie to see Bowman. And he played on it, and it was just it was just a hoot. It was uh, something that he even beat the Tonight Show ratings sometimes because he was on opposite the Tonight Show on Friday night originally, and that that's that's an amazing feat for a local show. It was it was just a campy thing um, every Friday night, 11:30, Channel 8, Bowman Body. What's he up to? A phenomenon. There was never any script which probably comes as a big surprise. <laughs> um, uh, everything was just sort of ad-libbed and made up. And uh, WLAE Radio, which was owned by the same people at the time, had a basketball team made up of the disc jockeys. And they decided that a real good feature would be to have the Bowman body be part of this basketball team. And uh, Bob Travis, BLT was his name in the air, was on the program with me. And we were talking about, we were talking about this game we were gonna do. And I threw the ball to him, and he missed it. But well, we didn't really need the ball, it didn't make any difference, so we just kept talking. The ball rolled across the room past the camera operator who thought we needed it. So he reaches over, picks it up, and lobs the basketball back at us. And I'm talking to Bob, and I looked up, and the ball was about that far from my nose. The ball hits me in the nose and knocked me back into the coffin and knocked the coffin and all right over the back of the set. The final scene in this is Bob Travis bending over, looking over the back of the back at this debris laying on the floor in the back, which was me. When it's over, they stop the tape. The entire crew gets up and runs over to the tape machine and says, how does it look? Rewind it, check it, look at it. I'm laying in a bloody hulk on the floor. Nobody cares about that. The big thing is, how did it look? <laughs>